Hey guys, it's TJ here with the DFF Podcast. Our most recent patrons-only episode was on Dr. Oz and snake oil, which I'm not entirely convinced are two separate topics, actually, now that I think about it. But uh, you can watch. I've prepared for you a clip show of my favorite clips from that episode, give you a kind of idea what went down in it. And if you enjoy these clips and you want to see the full episode, you can do so by becoming a patron and you also get to see uh, all the future Friday episodes of the show, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. It's all laid out for you in the Patreon, which is linked to down below. Check it out and check out this clip show. I mean... There's a couple of really big problems with Stanley's claims he made about his oil. No. You t- what? <laughs> I don't so buy it for first a second. Off, I don't buy it for a second. How dare you impugn uh, Stanley, I'm sorry dude. to have to do this, dude. He's the rattlesnake king. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm not the rattlesnake king, dude. Sniping at the throne. Where's your cool Scotty nickname? Scotty trying to shoot at the rattlesnake I, I just, king, dude. I gotta take the pot shots where I can get them, dude. That's all You'd be I can like do, the man. Duke of Slugs at best, you know? <laughs> Duke, Duke, of, Duke of Slug, you know? <laughs> He's the rattlesnake fucking king. He's several rungs above you, man. You can't be fucking dissing the I mean, well, I got I you know what? I mean, I have to, dude. I he have, never I have a said choice. he never said a false I mean, word look, in we his drew straws life. and I got the rattle I had to go up against the rattlesnake king. All right, I mean, all right. you so go ahead. You go ahead. I got to do what I got to do, man. I'm sorry. Uh, so first, rattlesnake oil was far less effective than the original Chinese snake oil it was trying to emulate. A 1989 letter uh, to the Western Journal of Medicine from, psychi- uh, from psychiatrist and researcher uh, Richard Coonan revealed that Chinese oil contained almost triple the amount of vital acid to, as, uh, as did the, uh, the rattlesnake oil. So the vital acid, that is, I guess the, effective, uh, like the active ingredient, there was three times as much in the Chinese snake oil as compared to the uh, North American rattlesnake. Right. Uh, secondly, so the Chinese snake was actually, in terms of whatever the the, the medical so, applicability of this, I mean, shit yeah. Was, well, the that's not problem about this. You, uh, you really need to hear the next one. Okay. Secondly, Stanley snake oil, drum roll, it didn't contain any snake oil at all. Wow. <laughs> so I mean, that's a pretty big problem. What did he do? What did he make it? So he didn't even make it out of rattlesnakes. It was uh, so like all part of the the legend. Pure Fu- Food and Drug Act of 1906 sought to clamp down on the sale of pad, mes- pad, uh, pad, excuse me, pad medicines, and it was legislation that led to sta- this legislation that led to Stanley's undoing. After seizing a shipment of Stanley's snake oil in 1917, federal investigators found it, was pri- it primarily contained mineral oil, a fatty oil believed to be beef fat, red pepper, <laughs> red pepper and turpentine. That's wow. right. Stanley's signature product did not contain a drop of actual snake oil, and hundreds of consumers discovered they had been had. Cool. He was yeah. educated at Harvard. He knows that yeah. rubbing like beetle cream on your face isn't going to cure <laughs> cancer. He probably just realized like, hey, there's a niche where I can make money. Exactly. There's See, I'm going to buy this like rosy fucking bio that they put out there about themselves. Like it was when I lost my first patient that I realized we needed to take a look at other options. Bullshit. Fuck you, Dr. Oz. <laughs> That's why I honestly pulled most of this stuff because when I read it, it was it had such a PR thing, and I didn't. We could just discuss how like obviously this is not the real fucking deal about this, right? Guy. But because like he's not a, I mean like a lot of these people. The, the point is, is they kind of invent their own mythology. Oh, of and, course, and, and and they work with these big uh, media companies, then they obviously perpetuate uh, perpetuate that. Well, because you can't really sell it. Like if Doctor <laughs> Phil came waddling out, and he was like. Yeah, you know, the reason I do this is because I like to put big handfuls of suffering people's cash right in my big fucking oversized, gaudy-ass fucking Gucci pockets. You know what I mean? If he said that, you can't really sell that. But if he, if he makes up some story about, like, when I was little, I saw a man was psychologically tortured, and ever since then, I've wanted to heal the wounds. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you gotta them. come up with some stupid fucking thing. It's Paul, the same thing as a snake oil salesman. Paul, when TJ fisted you, how did that make you feel? <laughs> like, you can imagine one of these dudes rolling up on their cart going, my, my old grandmother had the arthritis so bad that she could no walk nor stoop to pick up the eggs from her garden. And yet I <laughs> rubbed this snake oil upon her back, and yay, she picketh up the eggs now. You know the, what I mean? The it's eggs like, from her garden? That's, that's some weird plants, dude. I mean, it's whatever. just weird that people like in these <laughs> certain careers have to like front like they're like motivated by like virtue and shit because like some horrible to, thing happened to them that you know, made like, them like Ugh. we don't have to do that we don't have to be like man i saw the, these you know orphans died of boredom and i realized then i need to be an entertainer and keep people entertained you know it's like yeah. 
Why do we don't need some yeah, pure? So, so donate to my Patreon doing. immediately. No one else does. I so no more bored African orphans die. I watched my grandfather in his waning years <laughs> flipping through TV <laughs> looking for something desperate for something to entertain him, and I just had to be an entertainer, man. Here's my proof. name is Marissa Harris. There are four stages of cancer. I was stage four. And I have stage four. Oh, you have? Modern oh. medicine had given up on Marissa. She but then she started hitting a bowl a with a stick, and now her and cancer is still riddling her body. I'm a medical oncologist, hematologist, and internist. With a totally unconventional approach to disease. You guys are going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Oh, my God. <laughs> How did I know he was going to be hitting Burn. a bowl with a fucking stick? Burn. And Dr. Here's Dr. Oz in his lab coat <laughs> selling singing ball touch, therapy to desperate yeah, cancer touches, patients out there. And massage has proven to be effective, Paul. Oh, my God. It's some type of an extension. So this woman, is her, 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 she has pancreatic cancer, stage four pancreatic cancer. And her doctor's having an honest conversation like, uh, best case scenario, you probably look, you're probably going to live another year or two. And what about chemotherapy, that poison, that bad stuff? He's like, maybe that'll work a little bit. Would you do it? He's like, well, no, not really, because you're not going to survive no matter what. You know what I would do? Stick my head in a singing bowl and let yeah. somebody hit it with a what stick. About, she, she, what about diet? So you already have cancer. Your diet's not going to change the cancer. It's not going to make it go away. She, she, so basically, she's grasping for straws. And people like Dr. Oz and this fucking doofus are giving her false hope by going, this is going to release negative energy. Bung! Bye. There goes your bung life! Oh, she's going to be healed. Cancer can be a tremendous turning point in somebody's life. In so what happens? Like the cancer cells hear the boom, and they're, they're just like, like oh, shit, we got to get out of here. <laughs> Retreat. Oh, let's look at the other doctor's but complaint. This is let's look at the stupid Dr. other doctor's Oz, like complaint. Fact, sir, that the people oh, well, speaking well. against you are Pretty a bunch serious, of stuffy cocksuckers. A, quote, an egregious lack of integrity promoting quack treatments and cures in the interest right. of f personal financial gain. Which is all true. And they go on to say that Dr. Oz is guilty of either outrageous conflicts of interest or flawed judgments about what Thank constitutes you know. appropriate medical treatments <laughs> or both. <laughs> I would say both. Both. Yeah. So let's get right to the point. I would say more so the first one, though. Right at the top, first of all, uh, about the conflicts of interest here. Have you at any point, this, this any, is what gets you really or good. anyone on your television team, have you ever been... I love how you can hear other people chattering. Oh, 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 oh. Any sort of compensation to promote or push a product on TV? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. What a stunning, brazen liar. <laughs> No. Never, have you ever been paid money Dr. by Oz. the Brony's product? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Mr. Alphonse Capone, have you ever participated in the illegal transfer of alcoholic beverages? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trump, have you ever told a lie since you took office? No. Never. Never. Oh my God. I'm innocent. Uh, all right. Wow. Good stuff. Good stuff.